That sounds like a good Friday night. So we're going to use that to get the smiley faces to come back on this. That'll put a smile on anyone's face. Well, friends, it's time for an update. The bus is on a lift. Holy crap. So my buddy Dan let me borrow his lift in his garage for three days. So I didn't film everything as I went through. I just hunkered down and got it all done. Boy, this is a pleasure, especially for some of these jobs. So I'm going to show you what it is I've been up to on the last couple days since we gotten back. And uh, yeah, I think this bus is going to be really good. Well, I made it 500 miles home, but look at this. We got a bad clutch, bad brand new clutch slave cylinder. All the juices are just pouring out of it. So that gets done. That sucks. Overall under here, your life's pretty good though. Seems to have no engine oil leaks, no trans leaks. And uh, this is where our power steering blew under behind the front tires. This seems to work, so we'll put a prop shaft in there. This boot blew up and spread all of the grease on the brakes, so glad we made home. We gotta get that. These are in horrible shape, but they're just sway bar things. Probably do some soft lines up front here. Oh, you know, look around in there, do some zip tying and stuff, a little bit of shifter grease. But overall, not too bad. Pretty bummed about that clutch thing, though. I don't know what all moves on here, so. I'm not sure either. But we'll just give it some of all of it. Yeah, yeah, juice it up. Oh. Yeah, juice it and work it a little bit. Oh yeah, that's some movement. pushing it just too far yeah just a little too far out here giving the prop shaft the old right making it nice let's do this and the old prop shaft here the old oh yeah it's so much better than 100 percent improved fully restored in here and cleaning things up gonna go ahead and do the old ac delete and just cut your hoses and rip them off so they dangle they're not gonna work and even if i add ac back into this car it's gonna need new hoses they're 35 years old they leak like a sieve so let's just get these old ones out because they're just in the way of everything i don't like them let's make them go while we've, <laughs> while we've got access to the lift let's clean some of this up we can get in here and get all the old undercoat off using our little right? Maybe a little scrapey scrape with a screwdriver or razor blade, but the idea is if it's going to flake off, it's going to come off anyway. Same with the rust. So you're not making it worse by flaking it off, but if you get the loose stuff off and you get it clean, you can stick some new stuff to it that protects it. Let's make so it better. Under here, you can see this side, it's got a lot of the factory undercoating on it, but it just flakes right off. It, uh, it's really done a lot to preserve this vehicle. It definitely looks crusty and you got things like that that just look super crusty but i'll show you how we can clean this up and just how good it we are on the driver's side after a little bit of cleaning up and so you know we've got all of the rust decrusted so that our thixotropic wax our eastwood heavy duty anti-rust can stick right to that and protect it for all eons to come start up here so up here we did some zip tying of the new wires that make the electricals the fan work we put some epoxy on the Go Westy shift tabs. These are an awesome piece. If you get these from Go Westy, they're like, uh, I don't know, they're pretty affordable and they really fix up your shifting. So we cleaned all that up and we put new grease on there. Uh, and then let's see, what else did we do up here? We need to resecure that. We replaced a brake line from one side to the other and from that side to that side. Uh, made them out of copper nickel. That was a pain in the butt. Um, we added these Go Westy. CV protectors. These are a really great add-on. These are a, like a remake of the original that VW actually did offer for extreme off-road circumstances. They're made of like a, I don't know, like a conveyor belt material and they keep sticks from putting holes in your CVs. 
We also finally added some uh, brake backing plates. Put new fresh soft lines on up here. Uh, took the spindles off, the, uh, the uprights. Did not replace the upper or lower ball joints, but we did clean them up, put a little wax on them. Redid the brakes a little bit, a lot better than we had in a field. On this side, we put a new half shaft from Empey on. Um, it's just what I had around. It's not necessarily the one I wanted to go with, but it'll work. And I did a lot of cleaning up. I got rid of some of the old flaking off undercoat. Some of this, uh, some of this stuff just comes right off. Cleaned it all up, so we'll pressure wash this at some point and spray it with some fresh uh, wax oil. Over on this side, driver's side, we did the same thing. We got a CV joint protector. We got a brake backing plate. Redid brakes, soft line, didn't do the ball joints, didn't do the tie rod ends, but should be good. Put a rebuilt half shaft on that my local guys did. Redid all the nuts and bolts and things in there. But then where it gets real exciting is under here. Under here, we put our prop shaft bars back on and our skid plates. We repainted them all using some black Rust-Oleum. We put the prop shaft in. We don't know yet that we have all wheel drive, but we'll see. We also replaced this bushing and this bushing with the Go Westy Teflon ones. These new Go Westy ones don't require any grease, so nothing will stick to this and they won't wear out as fast. These should give us the nice two, two finger shifting we desire. So our prop shaft is in place. We don't know if it doesn't vibrate and we don't know if the front VC works, but the only way to find out is to find out. So then uh, under here, again, a little bit of a uh, undercoat removal this just literally you know just it's dry so real easy we'll clean all that up we'll put some fresh on at some point and then as we get further back we redid the cvs that needed the things we had to replace the clutch slave cylinder again the one we did in the field failed in 500 miles so that sucks and that job sucks to do then we also added in this bad boy this is a collector pipe from Vintage Speed. It, uh, it does like kind of an equal length header kind of thing. It removes a sort of restrictive piece right there. It should add a couple of horsepowers by letting the gases flow more easily. I don't know if they make this in a synchro version. The one I have was for a two wheel drive. I was gonna put it on my dad's bus, but in order to put this on, we had to drop the muffler down a little bit. We had to put it in the two wheel drive position. So luckily we had some Go Westy two wheel drive straps sitting around. So. We moved the whole muffler and cat down a little bit. I actually kind of like it down there. I don't think there's too many perks to knocking it up, but we will knock it back up if need be. And if we can get the right one to add the horsepower gases there. Uh, and I'm just going through bleeding the brakes now and hopefully she's a driver. Oh, I spoke too soon. I said the other day, wow, this battery's working great despite the fact that it's kind of an older battery. That's ruined. So won't start the car now sitting happily at like 11 for time for a new battery i hate batteries i hate that they only last like exactly 25 months so that they're right out of warranty and then they're absolutely ruined and i hate that they now cost 200 dollars. anyway i got a new battery let's put it in for a couple of days out here it's late october but it's like 75 degrees so getting back to work on heidi here <laughs> trying to figure out that uh dash warning light that um low coolant warning light because i i can't keep driving like that that scares the crap out of me um so things i've tested it's not the instrument cluster i've taken the gauge cluster out of heidi and put it in the blue bus works great i've put the blue bus instrument cluster in heidi works gr well does the same thing um it's not the relay the number 43 relay i've swapped those it's not that it's not the wiring from the black box to the coolant sensor it's not even the coolant sensor because we've bypassed that. So it's somewhere between the dash instrument cluster and the black box in the back. That sucks. I'm just throwing things at it. So I replaced the entire fuse block. I don't know. It didn't look that great. I had one that looked better. So let's see if this Would works. You look at that. The light is out and the clock works because fuse number three was blown. Anyway. We're in better shape now. Nice.
let's put some speakers in so that we can listen to the stereo that we've already installed. I'm pretty sure that I ran wires, but I don't know. So we're going to take these garbage little four inch speakers out and put some bigger ones in. This door panel also has a speaker down here. We're just going to ignore that one. And we're going to replace these crappy little cranky dudes with the good ones from Go Westy. We love the Go Westy ones. They clear speakers so you can put bigger speakers in. And uh, they don't break. These ones just break, like, randomly. You'll be going down the road, putting your window down, and then ba-bam! Now it's down. Let's Here fix on the it. driver's side, we went ahead and put a new this on. That's just a new one. I put it in the same spot. We put this on, too. This is a new one from uh, T3 Technique. It's greasable, and it's heavy duty. We'll do the same on the other side. Put a new booty boy on here. Got to reattach it on the inside. And I popped the sway bar off to replace all the sway bar things. But while I did that, I broke the one on the other side. So we need to replace both of these drop links now. And then we'll do the same recipe on the other side. Working on the bus today. We got the bus in the garage. We're putting sway bars on, sway bar end links. Um, I snapped one of them, so I bought two replacements. When you're doing the replacement sway bars, the end links, the drop links, the thing that goes down, you can't get the early synchro style, which is what this is. You can just use the later style. You just got to switch them both. So we're putting new ones on. We're putting on PowerFlex bushings. These are urethane bushings that maybe add a little bit to the stability, make the steering and cornering a bit better. It's not as good as some of the other options, but they work. They're pretty much OEM. Eh. Anyway, here's what came off. Look at the condition of that. This is in horrible condition. This is, this is was clunking. That side was probably already snapped. Um, anyway. We're redoing the whole thing. It's going to be good. It's going to drive way better than these. Let's change these power steering hoses out to some soft ones. These are just hydraulic hose. Um, you could probably get these made cheaper on your own, but there's no point. You can get these from uh, a couple of the different vendors, and they plug right in. They replace the metal ones. They're way easier to install. It might take a little bit of work, but then we'll have power steering again. These doors do back. I'm putting these doors back together with the good door panels, and... Uh, you know, I still need to get in here with some sound deadener. I, I love sound deadening the front doors. But we're doing some upgrades. Anyway, this door is silver on the inside, but it's white on the outside. I think this is the original door to the car, but it makes no sense because the door handle's different. And this is definitely popped out. Look at all that. Someone did dent work there. And it's still dented in quite a bit. So I would bet you any money that that is some thick bondo. Oh yeah, look at that. That is cracking on the outside. So right there, massive dent plowed over with garbage, covered in primer and rusted through. Yes, that's the look we're after. Anyway, I'm not gonna change it. Let's put the door panel on with the new speakers and then we'll do it again. We'll do sound deadener and we'll put the boom mat thing under there. And for now, it's gonna have speakers. That's all that this matters. This is a door panel that I got off some parts car about 10 years ago. Then I spent a long time storing it in a barn full of chickens, so it is disgusting. It's better than the one that was there, but we need to clean it up. Let's make it look this good. This is some stuff that I have. Um, this is not great stuff. I actually prefer Armor All, but this stuff works. So we just give it a... See all the mold and stuff? Just give it a... Yeah, just liberal application of this garbage. Just spray it on everything. And this stuff's great on like the OG plastic. Just let it sort of soak in. You want to get it real wet and let, let it like stay overnight. That's good stuff. Look at that Go Westy window crank. Love that thing. Anyway, let's just liberate this. Ugh, so much grossness. Still better than the mice. Hey, that cleaned up pretty good. I just sprayed it down with the garbage and gave it a old rub down with one of these Kirkland microfibers. That's pretty good. We'll settle for that. To make the blinky blinkers blinky blink, we're adding a blue wire in here. And uh, this is the driver's side. And you just add these little um, special crimpy add-on boys to the black and white on this side and similar something over there. And then you run that blue guy up through the grommet and up into here and you plug him into one of these boys. And then it does the blinky blinks when the blinker blinks. It's pretty cool. We're all wired up only to find that the that's totally broken. But when I push the button, we can hear the fan start to run. 
then some error codes and stuff. But it's trying. We probably need to do this. Time to put in an auxiliary battery because we need to run the furnace and we need to do the thing. So I'm going to end up putting the battery in this little cabinet here. But we got to run a cable from there up to the dash to attach to the furnace. So we're going to run some of this Anchor 14.2. This is my favorite stuff. Good wire. It's on Amazon. I'll send you the link. But um, yeah, 14 gauge is sufficient. You do want to run both the positive and the minus. Uh back there so that you can run a shunty boy and be able to calculate your calculations so you need to be able to run them both um let's send I'm it over here getting all the bicycles out of this car and it really sucks it's got a lot of bicycles in it it's pretty gross but it's getting better the gmrs radio we're installing is this little micro mobile unit by uh, midland and it's really easy to install covertly all you need is some power the antenna and then uh you know, the extension-y boy I have for the the handheld unit. What I like to do to install these, I put them up under here, under the dash. And you mount that right to that screw. That screw's already there. Just put it on. And it clears your furnace, and it clears your glove box. Totally unused space. That's Another where upgrade goes. I make on every bus is a mag light right there. This is just the two AA LED model. You know, turns on real fast. Real nice, real nice when you break down. But this one time I was camping and I opened my door and there was a bear there and I didn't have a flashlight. So I fought him with a shoe. Anyway, now I have a light. You should too. Put a new, this on, it was cheap. Let's push the button and see what it does. Oh, it's doing things. Let's see what it does. It's just blowing air. Kind of beeping a little bit at me. I like this uh, layout. It gives you a lot of indication of what's happening. No pump yet, though. Or at least not that I hear. Pump just started. It's got the pump going now. It's very loud, very loud pump. You can hear the pump down there. I just hooked this up to this can of kerosene. And it has done no sucky suck yet. Definitely going to take a very long time to prime this, but we've got some fuel starting to flow. Pump is pumping in. It's doing stuff. Let's let it just keep doing its little dance. Let's take the stock refrigerator out. They're garbage. They don't work. We don't even have a propane tank in this car, so it would only run on 110 volt or 12 volt while driving. And they suck anyway. So let's just take it out. Now, what I do know we're going to find behind there is going to be scary. We're going to find mice, dead mice, hopefully only dead mice, dead mice families, and rust. There's scary things back there. Let's do it together. It's coming. All right, I see some mice. Well, mouse houses. Ooh, she's in there. Ooh. That might take two Oh, There we go. That's some mousicles and stuff. They got their nuts here. This is where they put their nuts and their homes. And back there we got some homes. They ate all of this insulation and turned it into homes. There's a lot of insulation missing. Look at that. That's the whole critter right there. That's pretty cool. You don't always find them like that. That's a mummy. We've got our critter right there. Let's see what's hiding back here. Obviously, that's all rusted out, but... Oh, yeah. Big old hole. Look at that. It goes all the way across. How's it look over there? It's pretty bad over there, too. Well, at least the car's ruined. Oh, we'll build it. We'll build it better. I got these vintage KC light covers from my buddy Nate. They were spray-painted over at some point, so... I was going to get new ones, but they won't match the general crappiness of this car. So we'll just clean these up a little bit so that they still look horrible. That sounds like a good Friday night, so we're going to use that to get the smiley faces to come back on this. That'll put a smile on anyone's face. Go. Now that's the vibe. That's what we're after. That looks pretty good. Let's put them back on the front of the crappiest car. This thing should be like a lemons rally car. We should, we should do that. Let's be real for a second. There's two things I really love to add to these vans. Tie-down points and a banana hammock. 
These are, uh, I get these on Amazon. I'll post the link. These are phenomenal. These fit like all the normal bolts. So you can just make them the normal spots, a place to attach things. Yeah. And this is a banana hammock. They call it a gear hammock, but let's not kid ourselves. You're going to fill it with bananas. And because we're going to do tangibly irresponsible things with this vehicle off-road, we're going to need some of these. These are off-road recovery mats. They'll get you out of a sticky situation. They work really well. This particular set fits perfectly in the front luggage rack of a VW Vanagon Westphalia. So I'll post the Lincoln stuff, but they're really good. You need some of these. They're not that expensive. Uh, and you can put them out there and just leave them up there indefinitely. I get one-inch straps that are like three feet long, and they strap them down real nice. And then you have them. And the day that you get stuck, especially since this bus doesn't have a diff lock, you'll pull these bad boys out and you'll go, huh, well, that worked. Now that the van is working electrically and whatnot, let's change that. So it hasn't blown a fuse in nearly 24 hours. So we're going to go ahead and take them all out and replace them with different ones. The type of fuse we're putting in is kind of wild. These are these, uh, I don't know what they call these. I'll post the link on Amazon, but... These are magic fuses. That's what we'll call them. When this fuse blows, when it's broken, it lights up. So that instead of going, oh, I don't know which one's broken, it's that one. It's that one right there. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So if you do this and you follow the diagram and you make sure the right fuses are in the right place, because they probably aren't, you're going to end up only two 10 amps shy. And you'll have a bunch of extras and stuff. But, you know, you'll have to reuse two of those. Put those in the headlight ones because you'll know when that fuse broke because your headlights don't work. But, uh, and then you can store some spares here. You don't need these. These are for, this is space. Let me show you what it looks like when one of these fuses breaks. So we're just going to go over there and cause a small electrical fire. Hmm. This light's pretty much my favorite one to blow up, so let's just take this guy here, take this wire off, and just give it a little tap tap over there. Make a little bit of, a little bit of spark come out. Let's see if we, what you doing? There we go. I heard it go. It's broken. Let's go look at it. Coming over here, we're looking for the one that lit up. But none of them did. Huh. It should be that one. Let's take a gaze. Well, that fuse is broken, but it didn't light up. So the moral of the story is these were a complete waste of money, and I've bought these for three buses so far. But it's important that I tested them because they don't work. You shouldn't buy these. This is garbage. This was a waste of money. The link is below. Since that fuse definitely didn't seem to work, I went ahead and did the responsible thing and put another one in. Let's try it again. What's the worst that could happen? We find out that they all suck and we shouldn't trust this product? Or we do science? Ooh, let's put it in backwards. Come on, baby. Light my fire. Oh, yeah. At least we blew two of them. The fuses do work as fuses. I guess that's important to know. But it was still a waste of money. They also weren't that cheap. Here comes a review. And idling high. I don't really know why. And it's not always that way, but like most of the time, you come to a stoplight, she's at 2K. That's too many Ks. So let's get rid of like one of those Ks. Uh, I could be the throttle position switch. I think that's kind of messed up, but. Let's start back here behind the taillight and replace the idle control computer. This one was supposedly good, but they go bad. And they do weird stuff when they go bad. And I got a pile of them that aren't for sale. Don't ask me. So let's put one of those in and let's see if it does. Oh, the one I had in there said tested perfect. It was my writing, so I don't know. Something else is broken. But I switched it to a random other one, too. Maybe the one that came with this car? I don't really know. 
Uh, it's untested. All my other ones are untested too, apparently. So we'll test this one. Today is the day we clean the interior. And by we, I mean not me. I hired a group of very weird cleaning professionals that specifically don't do cars. They only do rugs, but if you convince them with cash money, they come here and they grumble about it the whole time. I've used these guys before. They bring their giant chemicals and stuff. I had them clean up my yellow bus, which actually had the afterbirth stains of uh, the prior owner's daughter being born on the back seat, and they were able to get that out. So if they can get baby stains out that have been there for 30 years, they can get rid of this mouse shit. Anyway, I'm excited to watch some junkies uh, use strong chemicals to make my car clean. They're all streaky. I, I keep getting it clean, but it looks horrible. So on this side, we're, we're buffing it, and it's working. We're going to lose these logos, but I think these are available again. There's a learning curve to this, but it's definitely going to look better than that. Let's keep going. It's taking this forever. Looks real bad, and this looks real bad. I don't have the exact right color paint, but let's just paint them so that they don't look real bad. This is definitely one of my favorite paints for pretty much anything. The Goodson Lash Last Blast. I always get the cast iron color. It's not a perfect match, but it covers things up nice and it looks way better than it did. Same with that down there. Let's put it on. One of the things, one of the most important things that every bus needs is a good auxiliary battery system. It can run a refrigerator, it can run a furnace, it can charge your things. Having enough power is one of the most critical things. It makes you feel more at home, especially with modern devices and stuff. So over the years, I've tried pretty much every battery and solar and alternator charge combo that's existed. I've put auxiliary battery systems in a lot of vans. Anyway, we've recently settled on a recipe I very much like. And it's based on a 100-watt solar panel, a 100-amp-hour lithium battery, a 30-amp charger, and uh, whatever for solar and whatnot. So, let's start with the battery. The one we're going with today is this bad boy by our friends at Lie Time. It's the 100-amp-hour mini. This is so light that I can hold this up the entire time I'm talking about it. I'm not that strong, despite all the time I spend at the gym. This is really incredible how much energy density they have gotten into these modern solar systems or modern lithium batteries. It is absolutely astonishing. That battery is going to go in here. I like this little cabinet. I like having access to this little cabinet and I like putting things in this little cabinet. So I don't want to lose that little cabinet. So if we lift the top up here, the top comes off it and there's all this space underneath this hose. So what we like to do is we take this divider out and then we just put the battery right back there. And then you still have all this front space and you get a little bit extra over there. It's way better, real easy to do. Tell you what, with this little battery, which is thinner, it might even fit on just that side of that little divider. We might not even have to modify the car at all. That Here's would be what cool. I'm talking about. What if we can fit it just over here? We don't even have to take this divider out. I took this divider out on the blue bus, but it might fit right there. We might just need to relocate this little guy, but that's fine. He doesn't need to be there. It's also gross down there. We should clean Damn, it. Damn, the critters even ate through the hose to get to the water supply. And that sucks. Well, we'll have to replace those hoses anyway, but yeah. It's pretty, it's a little mousy, and then there's a big hole back there that shouldn't be there. So we'll just suck it all out and clean it, it all It is up. so close to fitting. It's just kind of rubbing on this. Otherwise, it could move over another inch. Um, honestly, if this hose was longer, I could probably redirect it just the tiniest bit. If it just was long enough to come out straight instead of at an angle, I think I'd be golden. I might even get the heat gun out and do a little bending, but man, I think it can fit. Or I have to move that wall over just the tiniest angly bit on the back side here. That might wow. be an option. That is, that is so much cleaner than on the blue bus. On the blue bus, I have the battery over here and I had to remove this wall. Here, I was able to put it back in. I just had to move it over about an inch. 
Um, so it's it was there, now it's that way, so I just angled it out a hair. And this is right up against it here, but there's some space back here. This is still accessible. That's great. And then you have this nice clean barrier, so when you put things in here and you open the door, you don't just automatically see the battery like you do on the blue bus. This is great. Now we just gotta run some wires through there and we should be good. It's worth noting this space, I lost one inch of this space. That space was completely unused. And now I have a hundred amp hour lithium battery in it. That's awesome. This mini by lie time is a game changer for Vanagon Westphalias. I put my fuse panel right there. I don't really know why I put my fuse panel right there, but I got this one on Amazon and I think it lights up when the fuse breaks or something like that. And it's got, six circuits which is enough for now and i made sure it's below this line so everything should be good i don't know just get shorter screws so you don't screw into your water tank and leave plenty of slack so you can always move it so we're gonna switch out the fuel sending unit the one in there is the jp group one that is massively inaccurate this is a vdo one with the original vw audi stamps on it that i bought new old stock off a guy so i'm just testing it first i've got it all the way at maximum fuelage and all the way at minimum fuelage. And we're seeing what it does at the gauge. Up here, what is surprising is that even at maximum fuelage, it is not going to maximum fuelage on there. So that's weird. That's weird. Anyway, let's put it in. This job is gonna suck. Let's do it. Let's check the resistance to see why our readings are wrong. So this is the JP group one. This one has a thousand miles on it. And at maximum one way, it's reading 040, maybe 038. And at maximum the other way, it's reading 267. Now let's compare that to the VDO one. This is VDO, made in Germany, VW stamps. It's as legit as they come. Okay, hooked up here. At this end of the spectrum, we're getting 052, which is not 040. And at that end of the spectrum, we're getting 290. So it looks like it's supposed to be 290 and 052-ish. There is no possible excuse for this one not having the same readings as that one other than it just sucks. They did a bad job manufacturing it and it is garbage. It's time to do a big upgrade. We're gonna put Mansi Speed 1.35 ratio rockers on this van. What that is, is that's an internal engine component, two of them go on either side, that changes the efficiency of the engine. It allows the valves to open further without having to rebuild the whole motor. Um, it adds potentially 15 horsepower. Um, it is a little more of a process. It takes a lot of fiddliness. So um, we're gonna do some fiddliness. While we're in there, we're gonna pretty things up in the engine bay too. So first thing I'm going to do is pull all the spark plugs. That way we can look at them, inspect them, fiddle with the engine, but also it'll make turning the engine over way easier when we're doing the rockers. Let's do it. Let's add some horsepowers. This has been taking a little bit. Um, the studs that hold the rocker on, on one side were like in bad shape. So I had to go get a junk head from someone. And anyway, um, ooh, junk head. That sounds like a bad thing to do. We receive, um, anyway, I received junk head from my friend and, uh, now we're going to put it together. Well, that's done. The ratio rockers are in. It took a while. It is a fiddly task, but it's not that difficult. You can do it. It should add tangible horsepower, like measurable, dynoable 15 plus horsepower. So it wasn't that hard. It took half a day. Um, might take you less. I bet someone could do it in an hour seems possible anyway i turned the engine over by hand a bunch of times no clankety clanks or anything so it's time to fire this bad boy up and see if it explodes let's crank it up see what it does contact fires up idles good no horrible sounds Ooh. that does it does feel peppier. It does kind of have a, a throatierness to it. Idle's great. I don't hate that. I do like that. I do like that. 
Time to test drive. That's all tucked away. That is a 100 amp hour lie time battery. Um, this wall just moved over about an inch just on the one end. We have a Victron uh, 500 amp smart shunt. So that tells us, does all of our battery monitoring via Bluetooth. And we have our fuse panel down here with uh, positive and negatives to it and a rat's nest of things. Some of these things go up to there. One of them will power the diesel heater. We've got outlets here, both two USBs and a cigarette lighter. Same in there. And then uh, we'll have additional power. There's more power up under the dash for things that we want to run off auxiliary. So, sweet. Oh, and a charger. There's a 30 amp charger under the seat. The furnace is up and running. This will get mounted like that. I just have to build a thing for it. But the furnace is up and running. We've got real nice warm air coming out of here. It's kind of loud, but it's at full blast. Here, the muffler under here. And then basically that little tank, I'm going to put up on here. And it should work. I'm running the furnace and that doesn't look so great. Ooh, look at how spongy it is. It's probably ruined. Um, it just comes right out. We're gonna have to shut that off. That's weird. I've never in any of the other furnaces had this issue. That just melted itself in a Walmart parking lot. That sucks. Let's take out this ECU and put in this one. This is a decode, and this, we're just testing it to make sure it works properly, but then if it does, we can put a chip in here that makes it go faster. Uh, I just bought this off of the internet, and I bet it's broken. They're always broken, but let's Time to it. fix the filler neck seal on this bus. Heidi has been leaking gasoline out of that filler neck, so I can only put a little bit of fuel in at a time. The seal I put on it is a brand new seal from one of our favorite companies, and it immediately leaked because it's a piece of garbage. So before I go calling them out for it being a bad seal, because it could be that my filler neck that we filled in with epoxy putty and painted with a rattle can, that might have holes in it. But I'm pretty sure it's the seal. I think it's the zero mile leaked from new seal. So we got this one. This one was made by Volkswagen in Germany. This is OG. This is legit. This one shouldn't leak. It even feels better. Let's put it on. Check this out. I was just talking about how we need to replace this wiring harness and this wire is broken. This wire has constant hot voltage to it. This wire will burn your car down. If this touches that, like that, with the ignition on, your car is gonna catch on fire. I'm really glad I caught that and that is the reason why these wiring harnesses need to be proactively replaced. So this car is now parked until we do that. Let me tell you about car batteries. Apparently they all suck. The battery in this car is a month old, maybe, uh, because I already bought one that lasted only two weeks and I took that back. And this one isn't starting the car now, so we're taking it out. And the whole thing's covered in loose battery acid because somehow it's getting out of the... What the... I bet I take it back and they go, oh no, it tests fine. Well, then why is all the acid out of it? Eating holes in my car. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Look at this. See that? That's wet. See that? That's wet. The only liquid in there is battery acid. So it's that. Piece of well, crap. That alternator isn't alternating. It is making no volts uh, or like, not, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um... I guess I could do some testing there. We should test it here, but I think we're probably gonna put this one on. This is a Bosch premium reman that I just keep on the shelf, always have a spare. And that's a that's a Bosch reman, but I don't know. Today's the day it doesn't work. So we should put this new one on. Maybe it'll work. That makes no sense at all. I just, uh, what? I just turned the car on and just checked the voltage at the alternator just to see that it's alternating. And it's good, 13.5. And then I checked it at the battery and it's good, 13.5. And I checked the dash reading and it says 13.5. We got it down to 11.4 while driving at night last night with the lights on and stuff. So I guess it's fixed. 
I did not do anything. Huh. That sucks. <laughs> Back at it. Well, super disappointingly, all of the gaskets that I've put on the, the gas tank thing um, didn't fix it. Uh, I got a OEM VW one and it still leaks. So that tells me that all of the effort I put into making the filler neck not have holes in it by filling it with the stuff and sanding it. Like I wasted half a day. Didn't work. The filler neck is probably shot. It's leaking through the holes. So we got this one. Let's put this one on. This is pretty cool. This is a stainless steel reproduction that's powder coated black so that it doesn't look like a stainless steel one. Um, I can't believe these exist. When I got into Vanigan's like, I don't know, 20 years ago, uh, when your filler neck went bad, you, you patched it with stuff because there wasn't one. I have personally like brazed aluminum onto one of these to make it vaguely functional. So this was a little bit of money. Ooh, you can't see through it because it's all bent. Anyway, uh, I wanted to avoid spending the money, but it turns out I get to buy this. So let's put it on the car and make the car not leak any gasoline. Well, the gasoline reveals all, doesn't it? Look at that guy. It's probably that. That checks out. All the paint came off too. That Rust-Oleum does not hold up to gasoline well. Let's put the other one on, be done forever. Fitment wise, this is quite bad. This tab needs to be bent out quite a bit. This needs to be in like an inch. So yeah, see that doesn't, it's not there. This kind of sucks. Well, it was expensive. Let's not mess up the powder coat. Let's hit it with a hammer. Oh, I bent the tab the way I thought I needed to bend the tab, but I didn't need to bend the tab. The thing is it just sucks in general and it's off by about an inch this way. So um, yeah, as a professional metal fabricator, I would say that this fitment is quite bad. Yeah, at least it exists. Somehow we'll make it work. Bad start. Okay, let's fix it. Uh, pretty better. Nope, still not there. Let's do some more. It'll work. I don't like it, but it'll work. Drill a new hole there. It'll work. After an enormous amount of hammering, and that's in place, but uh, it did move out about an inch. So that hole no longer is useful. We'll build a new one. For now, we're not going to build a new one. We'll just see that it doesn't leak all of the gasoline, and then we'll do it again. But in theory, this pipe is a an inch further out, but it lines up pretty good over here. So, I don't know. I simply don't know. We don't know until we put gas in it and it all comes out over there. Maybe it's ruined? Anyway, this was expensive, so I hope not. Well, let's go ahead and put some of this gasoline in here. This is the old gas tank here, and we got the hose. It might just all come out. I I don't know. We will find out. Let's put five of them in. Five of these. Well, one of these. That's five of the smaller units. It starts with the G. Well, I put some gas in it and stuff, and we'll just see what it does in the morning. If it's all leaked out or it smells enormously like fuel in here, then it didn't work. And I'm very disappointed. But if it did work... Oh, I think it's time to send a screw in there and just, it's done. Wow, it's snowing. I hate winter. It's like actually snowing out there. Whew. Tonight, I've got some friends coming over to help me work on an old hide here. Uh, getting back into the tradition of having people out uh, to work on these projects. So we're going to keep at this with a group this winter and... There's a lot of stuff to get done. So hopefully today we can knock a few things off this list and have fun. Fun will be had. Let's change out this wiring harness. This harness has worked for 1500 miles. It, it has some issues. There's some melty stuffs. There's some hacked stuff. It is functional. This would get you off the side of the road and this harness is a keeper. But we got a new one, brand new, custom made, 
well, it's not custom made. They sell them. And uh, after looking over a couple different harnesses, we decided we're going with the Kyle harness um, from Kyle Automotive. I just think it overall it looked a little better. So that's the harness we're going to put on here. And that should solve pretty much all the problems. I mean, honestly, at this point with these cars being this old, if you want reliability from a water boxer, you better be putting on a new wiring harness. The wiring harness is the weak link, even if you don't think it is. Get a new wiring harness. Let's do it. It's kind of a daunting job, but it's not that hard. We can do it. Let's do there, it together. It, there are specific instructions. Uh, on so Ben's working on this clean room we built out of uh, live bees. There are live bees in these boxes, and every now and then one comes out. <laughs> Where do the performance stickers go? The performance stickers go back here. I'll take care of the performance sticker. Goes back there. Ryan's under here. Drilling holes. <laughs> yeah. Hang on, read that again. <laughs> Take precautions against static electricity by sitting down and grounding yourself by touching the heat sink portion of the control unit. Is that what you've been doing? We did that. Yeah. We did that. Yeah, definitely. Jim, you oversaw that, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Standing up in a fleece definitely <laughs> is like <laughs> totally the right answer. It'll be fine. Yes, it'll be fine. How's that going, Brian? There you go. And then you just poke your poke your hole there. That looks awesome. That's the Go Westy tie down bolty thing. So what uh what are you finding here, Ben? It looks like we have a decode ECU, but it doesn't look like the other one we just took apart. So it does have the yeah. socket for a chip right there, but this is not a decode. But I suspected it might be because it's it's a Bosch and it looks late model, so but it doesn't have any of the shielding. That's weird. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe. Well, we've got the new wiring harness for the engine management system completely installed. And by completely, I mean, you never know. You might have missed a thing. We also chipped the ECU at the same time and changed about nine other variables and broke the hall sender off of the distributor. So in theory, we can turn the key and the car will start. But if it doesn't, it could be one of like... A lot of different things. Don't change all the variables at the same time because it will suck. It will suck if it's not good. So it's either good or it will suck. Let's see what it does. Friends, we have the new wiring harness in place, at least mocked in. Uh, we've eliminated some variables and some stupidity. There were things that didn't work. Anyway, now they work. And uh, the chipped ECU does at least turn on and idle. Um, haven't driven it yet, but... You know, sometimes the things go wrong. But in theory, she's a runner again, which is good because I drove this car here today. So anyway, I'm going to tidy things up, uh, do a bit of zip tying, and we'll drive it to work tomorrow. And that feels irresponsible. I have to be at work tomorrow. But you know what? Let's do it. Worst case scenario, I don't arrive and nothing gets done. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. That concludes this video because I edited it and it's done now. Thanks for tuning in and watching it because it takes a lot of effort to put these out and to, to build these cars and I'm really doing it for you guys. So I appreciate it. Make sure you share it with someone and go check us out on Instagram. Do a lot of, a lot of stuff on Instagram. Actually, all of these video clips pretty much get posted to Instagram first. So uh, at the Barefoot Forge and leave a comment. Comments, comments are great. So I'll read your comment below and respond to it. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for being part of this team.